Belt conservatism. And now Vanderbilt University is in a battle over religious freedoms. We come together to do things that Christians do together, pray and have Bible studies. And come and pray to me and I will hear you. Justin Gunther is president of the Christian Legal Society, one of four Christian student groups at Vanderbilt that risk being shut down. The reason? This language in CLS's constitution, that its officers are expected to lead Bible studies, prayer, and worship at chapter meetings. Vanderbilt says that violates the university's non-discrimination policy to allow anyone to apply for leadership in the group, regardless of their religious beliefs. The provision has been in CLS's constitution for years. Gunter has been negotiating with the university but says he won't take it out. At the point where they're saying that we can't have Bible studies and prayer meetings as a part of our constitution, if we go beyond that, we're compromising the very identity of who we are as Christians and the very thing we believe as religious individuals. So why has this become a problem now? Last fall, an openly gay student complained he was kicked out of a Christian fraternity. Vanderbilt launched a review of all student organizations. As a result, about a dozen, including five religious groups, were put on provisional status. Vanderbilt says it's committed to making our campus a welcoming environment for all of our students and that student groups are aware of their need to comply with the university's long-standing non-discrimination policy. Critics say Vanderbilt's actions take political correctness to new highs. In an op-ed, law professor Carol Swain charged Vanderbilt was flirting with religious suppression. I see it as part of a larger attack on religious uh, freedom that's taken place across the country, especially when it comes to conservative groups. We reached out to Vanderbilt officials several times asking them to respond on camera directly to the concerns of these religious groups. They refused our request for an interview, only giving us a written statement that said they continue to work with the groups to bring them into compliance with Vanderbilt's non-discrimination policy. Kyle Blaine has been following the story for the Vanderbilt student newspaper. He says there's nothing but confusion at the moment. I don't think the Christian organizations know where they're going. They've expressed to me that they feel like the rug's going to be pulled from under their feet at any moment. Um, and the university has expressed to me that they really want to get this right. Lord God, we... Gunter says anyone is welcome to join the Christian Legal Society. But he adds, in order to be a Christian organization, CLS needs Christian leaders. I think as they really delve into the issues, they will change their minds and they will agree to us and allow Vanderbilt to be a place that really respects all religious people and provides for religious diversity. One religious organization, the Catholic Student Group, did come into compliance by watering down its constitution, so now the only requirement for leaders is that they be undergraduate students at Vanderbilt. But the Christian Legal Society, which has had problems with non-believers in the past, says it can't go that far. In Atlanta, John Roberts, Fox News. Thank you, John Roberts. Well, joining me now, three of my favorite American voices, including Carol Swain, professor at Vanderbilt University, also sponsor of the, uh, uh, the Christian uh, Legal Society, author of the book, Be the People, A Call to Reclaim America's Faith and Promise, Grammy award-winning country music artist, Billy Dean, good to have you with us, and radio talk show host, Heidi Harris. Great to have you here, Heidi. Uh, Heidi, your first, your reaction uh, to what you've just seen uh, in Vanderbilt at, uh, at Vanderbilt University. Well, I think she's right when she said it's part of a larger issue. It really is. I mean, I don't understand why anybody who's not a Christian wants to be a part of a Christian legal group. You know, I wouldn't, as a person who eats meat, go join a vegan society and then show up at the meeting and try to bring out a steak at the barbecue or something. I just don't get it. It's just like the people, remember a few years ago there was that lawsuit where some gay people went to eHarmony and tried to find gay relationships and they sued eHarmony? Why don't you find your own groups of people with whom you already agree? What's the point of trying to infiltrate other groups and try to make them water down their beliefs? It's a total attack against Christianity. Bill, I'm getting real tired of it, frankly. Billy Ding? Well, I, I, you know, I see that um, it's important, it, as long as you can have a diversity of groups, you know, if you, you can have an atheist group, you can have a Muslim group, and let them, the leaders believe what they believe. I think it's good, as long as these groups are promoting tolerance and education, I think they should have their distinguished you know, identity as to who they are and what they believe. I think it helps us become better educated to learn about these different groups and what better place to do it than on a, on a university campus. Well, that campus is your home, uh, Carol. Uh, this, is quite a, it, this is quite a mess. I mean, what is behind this? You know, there is such a thing as leave well enough alone. 
is there an incident that has occurred that is the incipient basis for all of this? What, what's the deal? I, I think the university wants to be seen uh, across the world as progressive. And because they're in the Bible Belt, they feel they have to go one step further to show that they are not part of the Southern traditions. It's a totally irrational policy. It was ill-conceived and hastily thrown together. And I don't know how the university can hope to to sustain the policy because it makes well, no you're, sense. You're the faculty advisor for CLS, correct? Yes, I am. Uh, did the university president or the dean or someone in authority uh, at that level come to you and say, look, we're going we're gonna to be doing some different things and this is what's, what students or you or somebody's done that's irritated the, the heck policy, out of us or somebody else? No, not at all. The policy no communication at all. all. No communication at all. And CLS did change its constitution, tried to bring it into compliance with the university policy, but the university was not satisfied with the changes CLS made. Well, who's driving so this? we had to draw the line. Who, who's driving well, this? I, this? This is always about people. Wait, 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 Carol, just it, a second, just a second. <laughs> this is always about people. Who is the person right. in authority who is driving this? Well, the chancellor is Nick Zeppos, and if we say the book stops at the top or starts at the top, he's the chancellor, and I'm sure that lower level staff would not be implementing this policy unless they had been told by their superiors. So why doesn't so he sure have the guts to go in front of the uh, in front of Fox's cameras, come on this broadcast, uh, go public and talk with intelligence and reason about what at, at first looks to be a very stupid and unreasonable uh, and aggressive, needlessly so, initiative on the part of the university? I think they need an uh, expert in crisis management. I'd be happy to go before the cameras and try to argue their position. Well, no, and no, I no, 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 no. I'm being very is. serious here. I'm being very serious. You're in a university. It's academic freedom. Right. There is supposed to be a, 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 an arena of ideas at that university, uh, not an insular, isolated, bunker-minded administration that is arrogant in the extreme, depriving, it appears, uh, students uh, and faculty of, of their rights. We, we just recognize Wicca as an official holiday that students can be excused from classes. I think we want to be seen as a, quote, progressive institution. I got that. I got that. But if you're going to be progressive, wouldn't you want to? But I care what I don't understand is if he wants to be progressive, why doesn't he march into the arena of ideas? Uh, he's sitting at, at one of the great universities in this country. Uh, behaving uh, like an authoritarian uh, without a clue as to how to, to lead, rather than one who is leading toward progressive. Some, well, let some me do this. Let me turn, Heidi, what are your can. thoughts? What, how should we do this? How, how should this be resolved? Well, I think Christians have to stop retreating. I agree with what she said. I'm glad they're sticking to, you know, a lot of their principles. You've got to stop retreating. I don't understand. The, the ultimate goal of the gay agenda is not tolerance. There's already tolerance. They want acceptance. They will not stop until you're forced to accept their lifestyle. I don't understand that. Why aren't you satisfied with tolerance? Why are you infiltrating these groups and trying to force them to believe what you believe? Leave them alone if you don't feel like you're going to be accepted. I don't understand it, but I see it as part of their ra very radical agenda to not allow anyone to have a different point of view anymore on campuses throughout the country. It's going on all the time. Uh, Billy, let me ask you this. You Bill, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Billy, I want to, I want to change the subject Look, now, Billy. Yeah, uh, go ahead. It looks to me like we've, I, we've got some good news, legitimately good news, where Harry Reid and Mitch McConnell actually came to an intelligent, reasonable, common sense uh, judgment together uh, and are moving forward. Uh, you ready are you to sing sure? Hallelujah? Did I hear that right? Did I hear that right, Lou? Are you sure that came out of your mouth? <laughs> well, that's good because, man, uh, I think all of us Americans are tired of the bickering. We all need to come to the middle and and quit playing with the, the American people's lives here and with these debates and the and the and the policy mixes up, especially with the election, because man, people. People are hurting right now. We need solutions. We need people to put partisans aside. We all know this. And let's get something done. No matter what side of the aisle comes from, let's get something done. And let's, we can't wait till the next election. People wow, can't are you sit gonna on buy, the Are you going to buy right that, now. Heidi Harris? 
No, I don't. I want to do nothing, Congress. I have more money in my pocket, and I have more freedom. This is the way it's supposed to work. This is the way our founders set it up. That's why we have these separation of powers, so that you don't get too much of what you want. I don't get too much of what I want. I like a good standoff. It works well for me. Uh, and Carol Swain, the president telling the Congressional Black Caucus to quit complaining. Well, I mean, uh, they what the, what the heck out. was that about? <laughs> he feels like the brothers are getting off the plantation. That there's a there's a fear that the, the blacks will not turn out in 2012. And I hope that uh, that blacks will look at the president, look at the economy, look at what's worked and has not worked, and will consider moving off the plantation, the Democratic plantation. Well, I'll tell you this: uh, it, it's, we're looking at an erosion of support for this president that is uh, that is breathtaking. Uh, and uh, dramatically, uh, dramatically, uh, I would think, worrisome for this, uh, this White House. Folks, thank you very much. We appreciate it, Carol. Heidi, Thanks. thank you very much. Thanks, Lou. Billy, thank, thank you. you Lou. Up next, a live news conference on the Senate deal tonight that will avoid a government shutdown.